Hi, today we are going to present case 2 which is about grand mal seizure. The following is a concept map about Jack and grand mal seizure. In the concept map, it includes the assessment part in which it is divided into three areas that include Jack assessment, school assessment and parents assessment. On the other hand, the map also includes Jack's background information. Firstly, let's talk about the conditions of Jack. So this part of the concept map is one of the main areas of the concept map that is about Jack's background and health history. For background, Jack is 8 years old and he is a boy. For his health history, it is divided into 6 parts. The first part is mental status that indicates his anxiety because he got an unexpected seizure attack while playing table tennis. And talking about his present illness, he fell accidentally and lost consciousness once but recovered soon. Moreover, we may find out information about his past medical history, social relationship and cognitive development in the assessment part. Next we are going to move on to the next main area of the concept map to see how grand mal seizure is related to Jack's condition. So firstly, we will be looking at the assessment part. In the assessment part, it includes three assessment areas that are school, Jack's parents and Jack. Now let's take a look at Jack's assessment. There are three aspects to assess Jack, his health history, physical examination and lab diagnostic test. As a school nurse, there won't be any advanced machines in school, so lab and diagnostic tests cannot be done until Jack is sent to hospital. Therefore, the school nurse can only obtain his health history and perform physical examination. Firstly, let's talk about what should be included in the health history. Firstly, we should assess the time of last seizure, age of onset seizure if he has previous experience of seizure, also we should know about his condition during seizure, for example, did he lose consciousness? Any emotional changes before and after the seizure? Next we should assess if he has been taking any medications and we should know about the types and adverse effects. Other than that, assess the place of seizure occurrence. Also we should assess any risk factors in associating with seizure, for example, emotional status, fall history and strong stimuli etc. As we can see from Jack's condition that he fell in feeling anxious and at the same time surrounded by many students that would produce loud noises. As a result there are interlinks between Jack's conditions and the precipitating factors starting off from the assessment part. These factors could be some of the possible reasons of inducing seizure. For the second part of the health history, we should assess if there are any existence of signs and symptoms related to grand mal seizure. Here shows the major types of signs and symptoms of the diseases. For the third part of health history, we should assess if there are any possible causes related to grand mal seizure because it will be useful in designing a care plan for Jack. Here are some of the causes related to grand mal seizure. The second part of assessment we can perform is physical examination that includes vital signs, neurological assessment, the head, the face, the neck, motor function and also intracranial pressure. Talking about neurological assessment we can assess the level of consciousness by using Glasgow Coma Scale. Also we should assess his cranial nerve function to make sure his brain is not traumatized after falling. Moreover, examine the head shape and circumference to see if any presence of abnormal swelling that might be caused by trauma. Examine the symmetry of face for identifying if there is paralysis of cranial nerves. Examine the range of motion of the neck to identify if there is a sign of infection in the central nervous system. We should assess his motor function as well. Other than that increased intracranial pressure may occur due to head trauma so we should assess if Jax is having headache, dizziness, blurred vision, vomiting, irregular respiration etc. because increased intracranial pressure is one of the possible reasons causing seizure. On the other hand, when Jack is sent to the hospital, we can perform lab and diagnostic tests. Using it can help evaluate seizure type. Using skull x-ray can evaluate the presence of tumors or fractures. Using lumbar puncture can rule out if Jack is having infection in the CNS which may cause seizure, for example, encephalitis. Using MRI in Connecticut can identify intracranial bleed or tumors, and also testing his serum nutrients level can reveal if he is lacking of nutrients that might also be the cause of inducing seizure. The school assessment will include three aspects. These are school's student, school's seizure policy and teachers, to assessment Jack's classmate, the first thing to know is their attitude towards the disease and patient, are they discriminative, supportive, or respective? Also, we should assess if they have the ability to perform immediate actions when seizure occurs, for example can they spread out and provide privacy to patient, calling for help, 
and move away objects that are close to the patient to provide a safe environment for the patient. Next we should assess if the students have the basic knowledge about seizure, such the signs and symptoms of seizure. These assessment objectives would be a big help on planning school-based interventions. The second would be school policy focusing on seizure situation. Schools should have a seizure policy and this should include aspects such as what to do when a child having seizure that studies in the school, what to do regarding the records of seizures, procedures regarding the administration of medicine or when a child experiences a seizure, any possible special educational needs associated with seizure, and also a school environment that supports the needs of a child with epilepsy. It is important that the staff should appear calm to avoid panic of the patient and other students after seizure has taken place, and every effort should be made to maintain the child's dignity and privacy. On the other hand, when a child goes into a prolonged seizure or a series of seizures without regaining consciousness in between, the administration of emergency medication may be needed, so we should assess if there is any action plan for this situation and it should be agreed between parents, school staff and medical professionals. It is essential that school staff should have a clear understanding of what to do in such situations and a written agreement on the action plan needs to be made available to all staffs. Besides, teachers can help by recording seizure-related information. We should assess if there is existence of a seizure diary for Jack so that it can help the health professionals understand seizure pattern and frequency. The third would be assessment about the teacher. For the teacher knowledge of epilepsy, we should assess how much the teachers understand the possible learning and behavioral implications of a student having seizure and assess the need of training on epilepsy and educational implications. On the other hand, we should assess if the teachers are aware of any difficulties with attention, depressive symptoms, and classroom learning problems of Jack, as well as the direct effects of seizures on learning, because children with seizure may suffer lowered self-esteem and lack of motivation to learn. Seizures in the presence of classmates can be socially devastating and can be frightening for students and staff. Teachers and classmates may live in constant fear of seizures and ignorance of epilepsy may lead them to believe that affected children are less capable and less deserving of attention and encouragement. To understand the child's learning difficulty, children with epilepsy may fall behind peers due to the stay in hospital. We should assess if Jack has specific cognitive deficits so we might discuss with the teachers about the need of using visual supports, preferential seating or formulating special teaching skills. Some of these approaches may also help children with epilepsy who experience difficulties maintaining optimal attention. For social skills difficulties, ask the teacher how others in class see Jack would be a big help in formulating a care plan for him to promote his self-esteem, or in some cases Jack might need a referral to an appropriate mental health professional for assessment and treatment of significant symptoms of depression and anxiety. Finally, we will talk about the last part of the assessment, we will assess Jack's parents. This part of assessment includes aspects that are parental conditions, past medical history of Jack, social life, immunity record, knowledge, lifestyle of Jack and emotional status of the parents. Firstly, let's talk about parental condition. We should assess the pregnancy history of Jack's mother to see if there are any complications occur during his prenatal, perinatal and postnatal period, for example, infection, history of seizure during pregnancy. Secondly, we should assess the past medical history of Jack by asking their parents for more in-depth information related to his disease. Firstly, assuming that if this is not the first time of Jack having seizure, we should assess his history of performing any treatments for grand mal seizure. For example, did Jack perform any surgery related to seizure before? And was he taking any medication? Moreover, we should assess the information on the history of seizure condition in the past, for example, age of onset seizure emotional changes, pattern, length and number of times of seizure. Other than that, we should ask their parents about if Jack has any history of injuries or infection in the past such as head trauma and encephalitis. Thirdly, we should assess his social life from his parents, because Jack might be embarrassed in talking about his social life, hence parents could provide more useful information about it and this information would be useful for us to determine whether corresponding interventions should be included in the care plan. Fourthly, we should assess Jack's immunity record, because some of the brain infections can be prevented by vaccination, so that we should see if Jack has taken any certain vaccination before. Fifthly, we should assess if the parents have adequate knowledge on seizure, intervention, cause, types, signs and symptoms and preventive measures. This is very important, because if seizure occurs in the future, we should ensure that the parents would have adequate knowledge on managing, 
such situation correctly in order to ensure Jack's safety. Sixthly, we should assess the lifestyle of Jack. Similarly, we could obtain more useful information from parents in order to know more about his situation. In this aspect, we should assess if Jack has participated in any other activities other than table tennis. Next we should assess his daily routine for example, sleeping pattern because lacking of sleep is one of the causes of inducing seizure. Also, we should assess if he is a balanced diet because malnutrition is also one of the causes of seizure. Moreover, we should assess his degree of pressure by knowing his study pattern because stress is also a cause of seizure. Seventhly, we should assess his parents' emotional status to see if they are worried, scared by Jack's condition in order to consider if there is a need of counseling Jack's parents. In conclusion, this concept map presented the three assessment parts, Jack assessment, school assessment and parents assessment in order to understand Jack's condition in different aspects so that it could help in constructing a full dimensional care plan in order to cope with Jack's disease. This is the end of the presentation. Thank you.